Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our latest prep hour session uh, with Steve. And that's my name, Steve McFowl from OET Online, and looking forward to uh, delving into the world of medical acronyms and abbreviations. Now, it's just gone 5 p.m. on the 23rd of June, where I am, Brisbane on the east coast of Australia. So if I could get everyone to just type in a hello and um, we'll begin our communication. So I'm just going to type in, just type in your location and where you're located um, so we can share that. All right, just waiting for that to happen, everyone. I'll just say hello there. Lots of likes coming in. Thank you, everyone. Good to see those thumbs up. Hello, Fook. Welcome. Hello, Amber. Hello to London. Let's see what else we've got. I'm just setting up my information there. Greetings to the Philippines. Hello to Karela. Monisha says, is the June 26th exam in Corella cancelled? I wouldn't have the answer to that one for you, Monisha. You need to go to the OET Centre website for that information. Hello to the UAE. Philippines is here. Sudan, Swaziland. Hello, Saudi Arabia and Algeria. Uh, hello there, Rehab and a few familiar faces. Hello to Dhaka and Abu Dhabi. Good morning in the Maldives. I hope you're well. And Chennai is here. Hello to Nigeria. Great to see all you people. Hello to Bahrain. Good on you there in Bahrain. All right. Oh, thank you, Asad, for your compliments. Okay. Well, lots of people in here, which is wonderful to see. Uh, I think we'll get started and I'll be responding to your comments as we get going. Now, today's topic, everyone, is going to be medical acronyms and abbreviations. And it's an interesting topic because when you look at a set of medical case notes, um, you're going to see it's, it's, it says case notes, the word note short form. So you're going to get a lot of short form uh, that you've got to deal with on exam day. And I know it's um, a lot of confusion about when you can use acronyms in the abbreviations and when you can't. So my goal today is, is to help ease some of those concerns um, and to expand your knowledge so that you can take on the exam with confidence. Let's get going. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can like us on our Facebook channels and YouTube channels. And I'll talk about this a bit later, but you can visit, it, visit us at oetonline.net.au. That's our website, everyone. Okay, now to get started, the thing about acronyms is they're everywhere in our world. And sometimes we don't even know they're an acronym. Now, I can say warning, abbreviation, acronyms ahead. That's what's coming up. Um, but hopefully, uh, it won't concern you too much when you get used to it. So here's a classic example, the word laser. We all know what a laser is, that red beam of light. Um, but And it's used in medical surgery and those sorts of things. But actually, it was an acronym which means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Who knew? But that's what it is. The laser show last night was amazing. Um, so laser is an acronym that has just become a standard word. Acronyms have that power. SCUBA is another example. SCUBA stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus developed uh, last century um, from, but from the acronym, it just becomes standard um, part of our English language vocabulary. You need scuba gear 
to dive the deep wrecks off the coast. Now, when we start getting a bit medical, we've got words like AIDS, and we know that's acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, but commonly we'll write it as he tested positive for AIDS. So we use the acronym, it's standard. We got this one, the PIN and ATM. Um, PIN, personal identification number, your PIN. Next time someone asks you for your PIN, you know what it stands for. And we go to an ATM, an automatic teller machine. So you'll need your PIN to use your bank card at the ATM. So we're going to use those acronyms. And the last one, TLC. We all like a little bit of TLC. I'm going to ask you, who can tell me what TLC stands for? Type it in once you know. What does TLC stand for? And I'll wait for the reply to come in there. Who knows this one? TLC. Tender love and care. You're on the track. Well done, Jinky. Tender love and care. Chest and got it. Yep. Tender love and care. Isn't that a lovely expression? We all need a bit of tender love and care from time to time. The patient received plenty of TLC during their recovery period. Okay, and Bell gets gone for the medical, the total leukocyte count. Yes, that's the thing, everyone, medical acronyms. And that's why we've got to be careful with them because as we can see, different meanings coming in for that word, a lot of medical words coming in from your world. Um, and that's why acronyms can be a little bit dangerous. That's why we've got the warning symbol. There can be confusion as to what they stand for. Okay, let's look at some common ones here, everyone. And you'll know a lot of these ones, so you, you don't have to type them in. And I'll just bring them up, but we've got COPD, GERD, or GORD, depending on where you're from, PPIs, MRI, BMI, ICU. Let's look at these examples, everyone. Common medical words where the acronym is the standard. It's what is used. And look. Mr. S was admitted to a spirit hospital with exacerbation of his COPD symptoms. You do not have to write that in full. You can use the short form because it's quite well known. The same with G-E-R-D or G-O-R-D. It's gastroesophageal. Now you will see E-R-D and O-R-D. If you see it with an E, that's the US standard. If you see it with an O, that's the British standard. They're both correct. So we can write, and PPI, proton pump inhibitors, Mr. K's GORD was ineffectively treated with PPIs, including lanzoprazole and omeprazole. So you can see here, these are correct uses of the acronym. It's not necessary to expand, especially if you're writing to another health professional. Right, so these are common examples where the acronym is accepted. Now, Amrutha says, can I write laser in all caps or lowercase? Technically, it should be all caps, Amrutha, but because the word laser has now become just a standard word of its own, lowercase is okay. All right, a few more comments coming in. Nabel says, nice to see you. Did my prep and AC exam. Beautiful, Nabel. Love those stories. Really glad we could help you. More good stories. Kalash passed as well. Um, well. I'm glad to hear success stories, but look, we'll keep moving on. MRI. Now, we all know MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, but we don't have to. We're going to write, Mr. F would also benefit from an MRI to rule out any possible head injury. If you wrote, Mr. F would benefit from magnetic resonance imaging, it would seem quite odd to use that. So the standard is the acronym. BMI, you can use both. It means body mass index. 
Miss, Miss Z is morbidly obese with a BMI of 32. You could put body mass index, that's fine if you wished, but it is standard um, to use the acronym. And ICU, we all know what ICU is, the intensive care unit in a hospital. Mrs. X spent five days in ICU post-op before transferring to a rehabilitation ward. Now I've used post-op here. That's also a sh short form, probably acceptable, but you may choose, I would probably suggest even, to consider writing that out in full, all right? But it's not these things I'm showing you. There's a bit of flexibility and different people use them in different ways. So these are guidelines, everyone, and then you can decide. But, you know, it, the OET Centre tasks is expand on the case notes. You should, but there are exceptions. You need to follow what is standard in your medical field, and you can learn that here and by reading a lot. Uh, Muhammad says, um, or Shadi says, why use and before an MRI? Because that's a good question. I can answer that. It's, it's phonetics. It's pronunciation. And M, it's the sound there, Muhammad. And MRI, that's why we don't use a. We use an MRI. We would do, use the same an X-ray. All right, I'm going to keep the pace up, everyone. Got a few more. ESR. Now I'm going to put these words up. ESR, LDL, HDL, PSA, DRE. These are all common acronyms. Just type in the name of any of these that you know. You can just pick any random one um, from these five I've got listed here. Just type in any of these you know. ESR, LDL, HDL, PSA. DRE, might get some different options there. All right, while I'm waiting for a few of those to come in, there we go. We got, they're all really long, aren't they? Thank you, Arokia. The erythrocyte sediment rate. Um, and I can give you an example. But we wouldn't really need to write this. It's too long. And, you know, it's pathology. An ESR test measures how quickly blood cells settle to the bottom of a test tube and indicate levels of inflammation or infection. So you wouldn't need to write that pathology, that level of scientific detail. We've got low-density lipoproteins. Yep, high-density lipoproteins. And we could write this. While LDL levels were within normal range, HDLs with the apostrophe were elevated. That apostrophe indicates it's a short form, HDL levels. So it is possible to use short form here. Um, what else have we got coming in from the audience? Prostate specific antigen. Thank you, thank you Bashkar there. And DRE, is anyone going to come up with that one? It's E for examination. A little bit of a trickier one there, but I know someone's going to know it. DRE, type of exam. Lots of PSAs. Deep reflex examination. Thank you, Hamza. Haven't heard of that one before, but I'm sure you're correct. What I've got here is a digital rectal exam, right? And for that reason, I'm glad you wrote that, Hamza, because for that reason, I would not write DRE in short form. If I was summarizing this, I would say digital rectal exam revealed an enlarged prostate and a PSA reading of 10. So we don't have to write PSA in full. We get it from the context, everyone. Rinsela says, can we use RBC for red blood cells? Possible, 
especially if you say an RBC reading, if you give it, if you wrap it up in some context, yes, um, I would say yes to you, Rinsilla. Okay. Now let's move on. Now, so those examples I just gave you are examples where the acronym is acceptable, right? No problem whatsoever. But there are other cases where it's preferable not to use the acronym. And I'm just going to go through these quickly, everyone. If you want to write down the meaning of any of these words in the chat, you can, but I'm just going to rush through these because they're all common. So CAD is a coronary artery disease. DM, diabetes mellitus. Then we've got hypertension, IBS for irritable bowel syndrome. MI is myocardial infarction. OA for osteoarthritis. RA for rheumatoid arthritis. TB for tuberculosis. Look, these are good examples of words where you really are better off in your letter to write them in full, everyone. Uh, CXR for chest x-ray, MSU for a midstream urine. Uh, we've got right total knee replacement, but we might change the order when we write it in full. Total right knee replacement, put the right and left next to the actual body part they refer to. SOB, it would sound odd if you said the patient has SOB, shortness of breath. THR for total hip replacement and US, two ways of writing that, one with a slash, ultrasound. Now, these are examples, everyone, where you really want to be writing it in full on exam. And a few more examples. So what we were looking at there was procedures. Now, let's look at a few examples of assessment and findings. ADL, uh, that's a common one. A lot of people love to use that in note form. I'm sure nurses talking together on the ward, you're always talking about ADLs when you're doing your handovers, but I would advise when you, in your letter, to write it in full. We've got other ones here. Uh, AX can mean assessment, DDX, differential diagnosis, DX for diagnosis, uh, FHX for family history, Really common ones here. Yep, keep typing them in. Um, exercise your fingers, everyone. Uh, HX is for history. Uh, IX for investigation. NAD, common one. No abnormalities detected. Right, that's quite common. Uh, NKA, no known allergies. ROM can be range of motion. TX for treatment and RX for a prescription. Now, these are all common acronyms that you will see in your writing, but that you should expand on. Why? It's the standard, a medical letter. It's providing an overview. It's in letter format. It's a type of report, but because of its genre, it's a letter. You really should write these words in full. As your task says, expand on the case notes. Now, the kind of errors I see everyone, and you can help me here. I've got three sentences here and they contain errors. So let's see if we can fix them. And you can fix anyone you like everyone. So you can even jump ahead if you wish, but look, Mrs. D requires assistance with ADLs, right? I would honestly avoid writing like that. I'd suggest you find another way Get creative, everyone. How could you um, expand on that? Mrs. D requires assistance with ADLs. All right. How could we do that? I'm waiting for some answers. Hussein wrote activity of daily living. Well, you've got to be careful. It's got to be plurals. We'll get to that one, Muhammad. A-E. Accident and emergency, perhaps. Mrs. D requires assistance with activities of daily living. And I've used it, I've done it differently. 
Mrs. D requires assistance with her daily activities. So you don't even have to use this acronym in full. A lot of people are saying activity of daily living, but you really should pluralize activities. Nice one, Razor. Nice one, Vibe Have. Daily living activities is also good. There's different options there. Thank you, uh, poor Kitty, if I pronounce that correct. Limsha says, activity of daily livings. No, you put the S on the wrong word. You put it on living. You've got to put it on activities. All right. Next one, everyone. He has a history of DM type 2 and HTN and was admitted to hospital following an MI in 2018. That's really non-standard. So we've got DM, HTN, and MI. We really should write these in full. Okay, so have a think about that one. And the last one, um, Mr. Q presented to ED with SOB and CXR revealed lung crepitations. Okay, let's have a look at that one. Araki's jumped ahead and so is Razor. Okay, Razor says he has a history of diabetes mellitus type 2. Very good. And was admitted to hospital uh, and hypertension and was admitted to hospital following a myocardial infarction. That's perfect, right? Expand. Otherwise, it looks awkward. And Araki said Mr. Q presented to emergency department close with shortness of breath and chest x-ray revealed lung crepitations. Beautiful. All right, and probably we should use capital with x-ray. Uh, you do see both though, but if you want to use capitals and you'll see both out there, but we can just capitalize that. I think that's probably a little bit better. Um, but, and the other thing we want to add is presented to our emergency department. And I suggest capitalizing it as it's a name of department. So there's just a couple of things you need to be aware of when you write. You have to know when to expand. And um, look at lots of examples, um, including the OET Center website. And if you're studying in our courses, you'll see lots of examples of appropriate use. Okay, moving on everyone. Acronyms is a big topic. Now, when it comes to medication, um, you're studying um, uh, a subject that goes all the way back in history to Greek history and Latin history. So that's a, a beauty of uh, medical writing. It's got the origins in ancient Greece and um, in the Latin language in Rome. When we go all the way back to Hippocrates and that you'll see lots of this in your exam. But guess what? It's not a test of your Latin knowledge, right? It's not a test of your Greek. It's a test of your English. So let's have a little bit of a look about some of the pitfalls associated with the short, the abbreviation, and the expanded. Um, but I'll tell you this, the short form can be used in your writing if you're writing to another health professional, who would be familiar with that terminology? So you can use it in your letter. But if you're writing to a member of the public, then I would avoid that. Okay, here we go. BD, twice a day. Cap, capsule. IM, intramuscular. You can type in any of these. Thank you. Um, Haprajot, any ones you know here, you can type them in. We've got INJ, IV, NIL, that's Latin, everyone. Mane, Nocte, these are Latin. OTC is not, PCA is not, P PRN, that's Latin. Uh, QID, and these often have Latin origins. RPT, SC, STAT, TAB, TDS, there's some Latin for us. Turdi, Cementum, and Vit. All right, I can see lots of expansions coming in. Well done, everyone. 
see lots of correct versions, injection, intravenous. Now, nil means no or none. So don't use nil in your writing. Mane is in the morning, nocte at night. Shilpa tells us OTC is over the counter. PCA, did we get any short form for PCA? Well done. We've got, um, well done again, Haprajot, patient controlled analgesia. That click, click, click. Um, PR, pulse, uh, per rectum, but could also mean pulse rate, but we're talking about medication here. Um, PRN. Now, the Latin is actually pro renata, but it means as required or when needed, if required. All of those are correct. Um, QID. Thank you for those who put in four times a day. And RPT means repeat, repeat of the script. SC, did we get answers for that one? Uh, not subconsciously, Mohammed. I suppose in some circumstances, maybe it could, but I haven't seen it, but it could. But in this case, subcutaneous, because we're talking about medication. What about stat? What have we got for stat, everyone? Hmm. Rintilla gives us a variation, OTC operation theatre. Well, I know OT can mean the operation theatre. I haven't heard of the CIFA complex, but good try. Lots of different ones coming in. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, I've got, yes, thanks, BML, at once. Thanks, Chupa, immediate. So a stat dose, immediate, once only. Tab, of course, tablet, TDS, we've got three times a day, and VIT for vitamin. Now, the, the beauty is this: the, all this information is instinctive to you, which is wonderful. And that's why you're doing OET and not other exams, because you're in your professional area. The beauty of OET, everyone. Um, but you do need to know when to write it in full, because it's a writing test. So here's an example, everyone. A referral to another health professional. Now, this might surprise you, but I'll read this. His prescribed medications include um, glyclozide 60 mg and aspirin 100 mg in the morning, metropolal 25, 125 mg twice a day, and natorva statin 40 milligram at night and ibuprofen as required. You might wonder that that's perfectly good English. Perfectly good English. Um, but I would suggest if you're writing to another health professional, use the Latin here, 100 milligram mane, BD, nocte, PRN. Do you agree, everyone? I think the right-hand side is actually more professional, right? I'm not saying you'd lose marks for writing on the left, but it would seem a little bit long-winded to write like that if you're writing to a doctor or a nurse or someone you know will be very comfortable with the Latin terms. However, if you're writing to a patient, use this, right? That's the key point here. Know your audience, everyone, is what I'm telling you here. Know your audience. All right. So that's how you make a decision. Okay. Um, suitable it's suitable for letters to patients but not to health professionals does that make sense everyone so that's kind of like a uh, a judgment that you have to make right and the second one suitable for health professionals so that's a decision that you're going to have to make on exam you're going to have to base it on the situation and you're going to have to use your common sense okay i hope that's clear everyone and the next one here mr v reported nil allergies 
All right. Mr. V has no known allergies. Thank you, Harper. If I pronounce that relatively correctly. You don't want to use nil. Nil is not good. We really want to say important no history of allergies, no known allergies. All of those are correct. But nil I would advise against because it's not really English, it's Latin. All right, moving on, everyone. Got a bit more to do. Now, the other thing you'll see when you're looking at case notes, um, these we've been looking at a lot of acronyms and some abbreviations. Now we're going to look at more abbreviations, like and just the short form of the word. Case notes are um, full of these things, everyone. Thanks, Jot. God noted that. Uh, you do want to maintain a formal tone. So in these cases, it is preferable to expand. You don't really want to sound informal. Very important. You're a health professional. You're entering the world where you're going to communicate with other health professionals. And you don't want them to think that you're, you're unprofessional. And it can really come across in the way you write. You can come across as unprofessional. So you've got to set a bit of a standard here. So we've got lots, coal, SIGs, HT, INC, intraop, lab, min, month. People are coming in with these. Excellent. We've got cholesterol laboratory, including cigarettes. Yeah, we can work. These aren't too hard to work out, are they? Might be a test of your spelling, though. Um, of course, cholesterol, cigarettes, height, including intraop during the operation, lab laboratory. I notice everyone likes to put lab report. I'd encourage you to write laboratory. Um, min, minute, MTH is month. Okay, some more, everyone. Have a look at these ones. Post-op, pre-op, PT, um, RV, vitals, bloods, weight, or YRS versus YO. Lots of great examples coming in from the audience. Thank you, everyone. Type in what you think would be a suitable uh, expansion on these ones. I'll wait till they start coming in. Here they come, post-operation, after the operation, exactly. PT is for patient, that's right, Akmal. Post-op can also mean post-operative. You can use the adjective, you're correct. Um, or post-operatively. Lots of variations there, everyone. So it's not just one, post-operative, post-operation, or post-operatively. The same with pre, everyone. Well done. All right, Jeffy's just while we're waiting, Jeffy said, you like the lectures, thanks. And I'm glad, Jeffy, we could help you get your Bs. Excellent work, Jeffy. Uh, then we got PT for patient, that was mentioned. RV for review, excellent little Rio and Ajmal. Um, what about vitals? Thank you, Sangeeta, vital signs. Bloods, I've got blood investigations, but could be blood tests. Uh, Sithathra says WT for weight. That's right. And of course, the obvious one. Thank you, um, Akmal. Years and years old. All right. So here we go. Right and wrong, everyone. Mr. C's vitals were stable and bloods revealed no abnormalities. See if you can correct that one for me, everyone. Remember, we want to Keep the tone formal. This relates to the criteria of genre and style. Um, Mr. C has made satisfactory progress post-op. Miss D smokes 20 cigs a day. Pick any of those to correct everyone. We've got three there. Expand on any of those. Great for spoken communication. Absolutely perfect. 
but this is um, written communication, so it doesn't translate as well into the written form where there are standard conventions of formality and register that we do need to comply with, especially if you want to maximize your marks, everyone. Thank you, Razor. Mr. C's vital signs were stable and blood investigations revealed no abnormalities. Um, yours is good too, Vibe Have. Thank you. So we just expand. That's all it takes. Um, Arokia says, Mr. C has made satisfactory progress post-operatively. Yes, excellent. And I've got a different version. Mr. C has made satisfactory post-operative progress. I've turned it into an adjective. Both are acceptable. Muhammad, just add an S to your vital, not vital sign, vital signs. Ikri, you've made a good sentence, has a habit of smoking 20 cigarettes per day. Good. Um, just watch your vitals there, Felucia. You really want to expand on that. And Miss D smokes 20 cigarettes per day. You need to expand on that as well. Well done, everyone. Question coming through from Abu Raya. It says, if we were given a disease, then case notes given it again in abbreviation, can we mention the abbreviation in letter, especially if it's a long disease name? I think yes, I think you can. Um, you can do that. Um, and you can even use um, a technique in your own writing where you could say, you know, um, something like this to answer your question there. You could say, let's just bring it up. Mr. D um, has a history of, and you could actually write it out in full, multiple sclerosis. And then you could put in brackets yourself, excuse me. <coughs> you could put MS here, the acronym. Right, so you could do that. And then later on in your writing, um, following medication, um, and then you could put, you could use MS or um, you could use it later on. Um, um, or no, you could be, you could do this, Mr. D, attends an MS support group. So that is a bit of a, a way to, you identify the acronym in the previous sentence and when you mention it again, you don't have to write it in full. So you do have that option, uh, everyone. So you've got to make some judgments and decisions, but there are ways to deal with this. All right, I'll make that a bit clearer for everyone. We'll go for blue. And we'll bump up the size, everyone. All right, so that's a way of getting around things like that. Um, Shady says, why post-operative needs a hyphen? Look, uh, in terms of hyphens, you'll see it written both. You'll see it with a hyphen and without a hyphen, but the word post, it's also, we, we have other words like that that have olive like, the word like, we often use a hyphen. Self medication often contains a hyphen, but at the end of the day, you will see both and they're both acceptable. So you'll see both in medical writing. All right, now I'm gonna move on. Now measurements, what about in the lab? Oh my God, OMG. There's some incredibly long winded words out of the medical lab. Um, 
uh, incredibly long. So we probably want to avoid some of these. So we've got BU and just type in any of these, you know, everyone. Um, we're talking about measurements here. Any of these that you may be aware of. BUN, blood urea, nitrogen. I'll just bring them up, blood sugar level. Type in anything that you're aware of. Lots of it. Culture and sensitivity. Thank you, Cheston. Um, millimeter is that G for gram? What about HBA1C? That is a very long one, everyone. You wouldn't want to write that one out in full, would you? Hemoglobin. And I've got glycosylated hemoglobin. Yep. Thank you, Ajmal. But the standard is HbA1c. Um, yep, we've got other ones coming through. Heart rate, millimetre, uh, units per litre for UL, um, mm for millimetre. Lots of other ones we've got. What about mmHg? Has that one come in yet? Millimetre mercury. There we go. Well done, millimetre of mercury. Thank you, Razor. Um, and then what about millimole, millimole per litre? Would be unusual to write these ones in full. I've got millimoles per litre. And O2 sats for oxygen saturation. Thank you, Teen and Rory Sang. RR for respiratory rate. Thank you all. And T for temperature, quite obviously, isn't it? And a few people have mentioned WBC is white blood count. There's a few more, everyone. Let's talk. So just going back. So that's from the medical lab, and I'm going to show you you don't really want to be writing these in full, everyone. So look, I'll probably tell you this. It's a bit of bit of both, depending on the situations. But I'd be using the short form for these ones. Um, and possibly WC, but for me, it depends on the context. These aren't hard and fast rules. So there's a few options on some of them. It's a bit of a judgment call. There's not a direct right or wrong. Depends on the context of your sentence. Uh, I'll just put a query on that. I prefer OT, that's a query. RR, I think it reads a lot better to write it out. So that's just a little guide, everyone. Don't take it at 100%. It depends how you create your sentence. There's room for movement here uh, because it's English language. There's flexibility and how well you fit it in to your overall sentence. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go to the next page. Now this is an interesting one, everyone, on the next page. So... Have you ever been confused? Um, have you ever been confused with symbols? Look at this question mark, plus, minus, all these pluses, arrows here and there, lots of different things. Have you ever been confused with symbols? Lots of symbols here, everyone. And while I'm waiting for you to tell me the meaning, pick anyone you like, everyone, and type it in. And while I'm waiting for that, I'll answer Dan. Dan Rajan says blood works. I think the standard is blood workup, Dan. Blood workup indicated. I think that's very common. I see that a lot, um, particularly in um, US style writing as well, or laboratory workup, blood workup, because you can use, you know, what's in your medical word in your world. So, yes, the question, it can mean something is doubtful, possible, questionable, 
perhaps a query. Um, that's a question mark. Very, very common. Suspected is correct. Excellent. The plus minus is a bit of a tricky one, everyone. If you don't know the plus, thank you, Sajitra, with or without. And then we've got all these pluses. Yes, Sri Kadi is telling us it's increase. Positive, it can mean positive. But have a look, everyone. One is a slight trace. The standard is trace, just traces. Triple or three pluses is a moderate trace. And five here is a large trace. So these relate to traces, don't they? And you will see this in the case notes. Arrow up obviously means increase, arrow down, decrease. Someone mentioned before that hash symbol means fracture. And then we've got all these tick marks. You'll see a lot of tick marks. So obs, tick, circulation, tick, pathology, tick, bloods. I guess we're talking about within normal limits here. Arrow across, it could be leading to something or causing something, or it could be the reason. And you're going to see times with the cross symbol there or per, four times per day. And you get a slash meaning per common symbols in OET, everyone. All right. Now we've done that. Let's write some sentences, everyone. And you can write any of these you like. I've got four examples, everyone. You pick any one to write that you like. And I'll just read them out. And then we'll see how we can summarize them. Some of these are quite difficult. Um, so you have an opportunity to expand. We've got the note form but we want to expand. I'll give you a gap fill to make it easier, but you've got to expand. Let's do the first one. I've um, set this up a bit easier. So we've got urine dipstick, triple protein, double nitrite, and we've got blood. Her urine dipstick test showed what sort of levels, what sort of levels have a think about that. We've got of protein and nitrate. Yep, abs for antibiotics. That's a good one. Along with something traces of blood. Have a think about that, everyone. Moderate protein. Yes, moderate levels. You could do that. Moderate levels of protein. So we've used that. You could also use increased. Uh, moderate traces would work. Moderate traces of protein and nitrate along with, now the blood's only got one. Elevated levels, excellent there, Dorothy. Mild, I wouldn't say mild. You can't have a mild trace. You can have mild pain, but not a mild trace there. Minimal traces of blood razor would work. And we're looking here for slight, slight, thank you, cool, some slight traces of blood. Okay, next one. We've got Mr. K. He's age 66. He's an accountant. Urgent referral to a gastroenterologist for assessment. And we've got that question mark, pancreatic malignancy. This is quite an easy one, isn't it? Thank you for your urgent attention to Mr. K, a 66-year-old accountant, so we're just expanding there, who requires further assessment due to something pancreatic malignancy. All right, it's already coming in. Thank you, Neetha and Raisa, first off. Possible pancreatic malignancy. Or you could use the bull, a suspected case of all right, suspected works there. Um, you can use to rule out suspected, that also works. I wouldn't say his there, I wouldn't say it's, it's not his malignancy, it might be his leg, his arm, but disease, we don't normally say his with that. Um, Sue Lewin writes probable, I wouldn't use probable here. Um, you're hoping to rule it out. Probable means lightly, um, but we're really just querying it at this stage. It's not proven. 
Yep, suggestive of, he may have symptoms suggestive of. Okay, next one, look at this one. OMG, everyone, you got the pathology report. You got all of these details, typical set of case notes, everyone. You got your bilirubin, you got your amylase, um, your ALT, you got your albumin and the alkaline phosphatase. Um, and they're all nicely done. OET is quite kind these days. They like to help you out with the way they read it, giving you these values. But, okay, doctors, what does that tell you? When you what, what are you seeing in your patient? How do you interpret the case notes? What does this tell you about this person's liver function? How would you describe it? Blood tests revealed what a bit tricky here with something pancreatic enzymes we've got them all here so there's a really good summary word pancreatic enzymes and we've list bilirubin and amylase deranged liver function that sounds quite possible mm -hmm. so you can read that from your numbers can't you Anything else? I'll give you all a moment. Impaired liver function. Excellent. And that's great summarizing there. Possibly enlarged. Thank you, Ajimal. But the function can't be enlarged, just the liver itself. Disturbed, not disturbance there, Maison. All right, so lots of options coming in. Perhaps the deterioration. Poor liver function. Yep. And what I've got here, everyone, blood test revealed a clearly compromised liver function. So it's compromised, not functioning properly. Something's compromising it with a clearly compromised liver function with elevated pancreatic enzymes, bilirubin and amylase. So we really are using our own language. We've got all these uh, short forms and technical language jargon. You don't really want to use too much jargon in your writing because your job is to provide that overview. Interpret the case notes, everyone. If you can do this well, it will really elevate your score. Okay, and the last one, everyone, DDX, G-O-R-D, plus, minus, plus slash minus stricture, stricture, like that tightening, tightening of the esophagus, or whatever is happening there, plus or minus. The patient has a DDX of GORD something stricture. How would you expand on that? Now, while I'm waiting, Raj Kumar says, can we use reveal instead of reveal? Yeah, we don't have any time relationship in this sentence, so it's just an example. Yep, lots of answers coming in. Differential diagnosis. The patient has a differential diagnosis of, don't put DDX, a differential or provisional diagnosis of G-O-R-D, with or without, I wouldn't put with or without, when you um, paraphrase that, I would just use with, with possible stricture, with the possibility of would work as well. Because someone mentioned it before, but this plus minus, you're not sure. It could be, maybe, maybe not. It's a little bit like the question mark symbol. All right. Okay, and that's done, everyone. Okay. Now, I'm just going to do a bit of fun now. We're, we're moving on now. Just some other acronyms. Now, I want to test your knowledge. And you can tell anyone you like, everyone. I've got six acronyms on this page. This is just for a bit of fun. See how many of these you know. Uh, and I've got some 
symbols to go with them, some images to guide you. Um, so we've got this BBA. Can you guess? Bit hard, bit cryptic BBA, um, but it's talking about a baby. All right, then we've got DOA. Look at that um, reading there, flatlining. MVA, I think that's self-explanatory. Um, B-I-B-I, -B -I, what happened there? FTA, look at the calendar. And this is a bit of a trick, everyone. Llama, we got the animal llama, but that's not what it means. Oh, nice, Nithu, you're getting it, yes. And we've got MVA. Oh, nice, Dan, born before arrival, there it is. D-O-A, date of admission, it could be, but I'm going with Hussein, dead on arrival. That's why you probably won't see these ones like that necessarily on your case notes. Um, but MVA, you will, motor vehicle accident. Thank you, Rena. Brought and Sitafra brought in by ambulance. What about FTA? Has anyone picked up what FTA is? Not yet. Yep, we've got leave against medical advice. People know Lama, but no one's getting FTA. Something to do with. Um, It's got something to do with an appointment. Really common for dentists. Dot, not death, dead on arrival. Full-time attender, good guess there, Vipul. Your closely attend part is correct. I've seen this one quite a lot. When someone doesn't show up for their appointment, everyone, for the attention, nice try, Jinkei. Full-time attender, I suppose that's possible. Yay, Chele, I'll give you a clap. Failed to attend. Didn't attend the appointment. I'm sure you've seen that before. FTA, a no-show. And Lama left against medical advice. Your patient has left the building despite your advice. Okay, uh, I think OET is pretty good. They're not going to really, they're not trying to test too much your knowledge here, more about expanding. So you will be able to, um, they will um, be kind to you. A couple more, everyone, to wrap it up. NBM, OD, OE, and S-O-B-O-E. See if you can figure these ones out for me, everyone. NBM, O-D, O-E. The images tell it all. S-O-B-O-E could be a little bit tricky. Have a think about that. Nil by mouth, yes. Nothing by mouth, yeah, but I think the standard is Kneel by mouth. Yep, we've got some more here. On examination, yes, that's one. Oh, OD could be once a day, but we're wanting it to mean something else. I think there's lots of, lots of pills here. Maybe I don't have enough. Imagine there's a hundred pills. Overdose, thank you. Bye, Bav. Thank you. Uh, oh, nice. A rocky shortness of breath on exertion. Yep. And OE on examination. Okay. Good to know some of these acronyms, everyone. Common medical acronyms. And look, my advice, look, get out there. Look at the region where you want to work. You'll find lots of stuff online. If you Google it, you'll find lots of examples of common medical acronyms for your region and very good to be fam prepare yourself for the exam by getting familiar with common acronyms and then the rest of it will be based on context we've seen today there's several acronyms that have multiple correct meanings so it's all about the context everyone okay
And we're done. Look at that one hour, everyone. We are up. Now we do all sorts of stuff like this in our classes and we do a lot more paraphrasing. So if you are interested in studying with us, come along to obtonline.net.au. We do have our twice daily live and interactive classes. It's where you'll find me on a regular basis. Um, plus we've got our expert OET teachers that are and they're dedicated to helping you achieve success. And just remember, regardless of your profession, OET Online, we cover all professions. Why? Because, of course, we do nurses and medicine. They're the, the big fields. But if you're a dentist or a dietitian, a pharmacist, a physiotherapist, or any of the professions listed here, an OT, a radiographer, a vet, a speech pathologist, a podiatrist, or an optometrist, we've got a course for you. Uh, so we can help you. Thanks for all that. Um, positive responses. Now, if you do want to, we do offer a free trial course. Don't forget that, everyone. And I will give you a direct link to that. If you are interested in just checking out what we do, um, I'll just show you how to do it here, everyone. Come to our website. And this is the um, page link, everyone. I'm just going to drop it in the chat. Check this out. That's where you can create an account if you're interested in seeing what we do. Come along to an orientation. Check it out. If you think it will help you, like it's helped many people, um, that's where you go. Now, I've got some news for you, everyone. Look at this. Uh, something new, everyone. Something a bit different. Um, coming soon, Prep Hour with Catherine. Now, there's been a lot of demand for some speaking prep hours. So Catherine is one of OET Online's expert tutors, and she is brilliant, I can tell you, with her uh, speaking classes. So we're going to alternate Catherine and I. So we're going to go uh, one session with Catherine, one session with me. So um, I know you're going to love Catherine's session. Uh, that's coming up in one month's time. Keep your eye on the relevant media channels for information and you will get Prep Hour with Catherine and then I will be back the following month, everyone. How does that sound? I think you're going to enjoy that one. Bit of variety, see a different face as well. But that doesn't mean I'm going away. I will be back the following month. All right. So that's exciting, everyone. Meet a new teacher, a new online teacher. Okay. If you need more information about our uh, about us, feel free to drop us an email at info at oetonline.net.au. Um, and you can always visit our website. Right, the last thing I'm going to show you to wrap this up, everyone. Got one last thing I wanted to share with you. One second. Now, this is our Facebook page, everyone. And if you come along here, you'll see some great stuff. I just wanted to share, uh, look, we put lots of success stories up, everyone. But look at this success story. Here's Ahmed, everyone. He's celebrating on the beach because he smashed OET. He did our economy course. You can start study with us for as little as $100 for daily live classes. That's Australian dollars, not US. And you're going to get something like this, everyone. You're going to get a profile. These are the number of hits on our pages every day. That's hard work, study. And um, this is Ahmed. He's a doctor from the UK. Well, he's from Oman. He did the economy, he studied over three months. Regular attendance for reading and listening. Uh, and then he succeeded and he got uh, his desired score, everyone. So that's a real success story. 
Um, so come to our Facebook page, check it out, check out all the success stories for some inspiration or inspo as they say for short, and um, we can help you succeed as well. All right, everyone, I'll just, um, that's our Facebook page. So great session, everyone. Thank you for your brilliant attendance. Um, look forward to seeing you in the next session that I run and um, study hard and wishing you a good result on your next attempt. Bye for now.